So today we've got a problem from the 2018 Auckland Math Olympiad. So let's look at what it is. So let's say we've got this 12 by 18 sheet of paper and we fold it exactly on the diagonal. And then we put that shape down maybe in the plane or on a table or something and it might look something like this. And our goal is to find the area that that shape takes up if it's like laid flat. So in other words, it's the area of this thing right here. So I think there's probably several ways to do this. We're gonna do it maybe not the most efficient way, but it will highlight a nice formula, which I think is not super well known, but it's worth knowing. So what we'll do is we'll put all of this in the Cartesian coordinate plane, so let's get a set of axes here. I'll draw my axes in green. So there's my x-axis and then here's my y-axis going up here. And then, well, let's label some points. So since this has length 18, this is pretty clearly the coordinate 18, 0. And then since this has length 12, this is the coordinate 0, 12. And then likewise, this is going to be the coordinate 18, 12. And I guess while we're at it, I'd like to point out that we can pretty easily find the equation of this line. And that's because, well, it goes through the origin and then it has a slope of, let's see, 12 over 18, which is 2 thirds. So the equation of this line is y equals 2 thirds x. Now, the strategy we're going to take here will be to reflect this bottom half of our rectangle across the line. But let's observe that all we really need to do is reflect this point 18, 0 across the line. And since a straight line from the origin to 18, 0 will become a straight line from the origin to, well, wherever that point is connected, and the same thing for this, we can kind of fill in the rest pretty easily. Okay, so that means that, well, what do we need? Well, we need to notice that the reflection will occur along, or of this point, I should say, will occur along a line that goes through this point and is perpendicular to this line y equals 2 thirds x. So let's sketch that out real quick. So that's gonna look something like this. So that looks about like a line that is perpendicular to our original line or our folding line and goes through this point right here. We can also pretty easily write down the equation of this line and that's because we know the slope and we know the x-intercept. So we'll know that this is a line with a slope of minus 3 halves because it's the uh, reciprocal, the negative reciprocal of the slope of that line. And then we'll have x minus 18. It's got to be x minus 18 because, well, that gives us this x-intercept. So when all is said and done, that turns into minus 3 halves and then x plus 12. Okay, so we have that. And now it'll be useful to find this intersection point right here. So the intersection of our folding line and our perpendicular line. So let's find that maybe in this uh, spot right here. So the intersection of these two lines. So let's observe that that's going to occur when 2 thirds x equals minus 3 halves x plus 12. But that's pretty easy to solve. And what you'll see is that's when x equals, let's see, it's going to be 162 over 13. So again, that's just straightforward calculation. And then the y value here will be 108 over 13. So let's maybe put that up here. So like I said, we've got this point is 162 over 13 comma 108 over 13. Great. And now I'd like to observe the following fact. And I think this kind of goes without saying it's pretty obviously true. And that is 
that the point 18, 0 will be reflected to a point x, y, where this point 162, comma 13, comma 108, 13 is their midpoint. Well, that just kind of works with how reflection is defined. So this is going to get reflected up to a point here, and necessarily this point in the middle will be the midpoint of wherever we are reflecting to and to wherever we started. So, well, we can put that together into an equation. So the midpoint can also be calculated as x plus 18 over 2 comma y plus plus zero over two, or y over two. And that needs to be equal to this 162 over 13, 108 over 13. Okay, so again, just via some very, very simple algebra, we can see that that means that x equals 90 over 13, and then y equals, let's see, it's gonna be 216 over 13. Now, we're going to make a picture of all of this. So in order to make a picture all of, it, of all of this, I'd like to observe that x is approximately equal to 7, whereas y is approximately equal to 16 and a half. I'll put 16.6 here. Okay, nice. So keeping that in mind, let's maybe get a picture of the reflection of this point 18, 0 up above here, but we'll draw it over here. Okay, so there's our picture of the situation. So I've reflected our point down here that started at 18, 0 across the folding line in question, which in this case, I'll put the folding line in magenta. So this point up here is our point 18, 0 reflected about this folding line. Good. And now, well, let's see what happens after that. So this line here from 0, 0 to 18, 0 will be reflected up to this line right here from 0, 0 to 90, 13, 216, 13. So I can start drawing that line right here. And then, well, let's notice that it kind of continues down to zero, zero like that. Although I'm kind of looking ahead and keeping in mind that I want to create this picture right here with this folding. Okay, good. And then this point right here from 18, zero to 18, 12 will get reflected up to a line from 18, 12 to our 90 over 13, 216 over 13. So it gets reflected to that line right there. And then, well, let's observe that this right here will stay fixed because we're only reflecting this bottom portion. And then, well, this line right here from 0, 12 to 18, 12 also stays fixed because, again, we're just reflecting our bottom portion. But now I'd like to observe that if I were to uh, project this all down into the plane and kind of forget about the folding, I would end up with a picture like this. So I've got that coordinate there that still needs to be calculated. But I'd like to observe that that coordinate right there is actually pretty easy to calculate. And that's because it's on the line from 0, 0 to this point right here and it has a y value of 12. So you can calculate the equation of this line pretty easily, just keeping in mind that the slope will be this y coordinate divided by this x coordinate. So the slope here is in fact equal to 12 over five. So I'll just put that here. This is the line y equals 12 over five x, which is our line here. But now observe that if y is going to be equal to 12, then x is pretty obviously going to be equal to 5. So that means the coordinate right there is 5, 12. And now we're ready to use this thing called the shoelace theorem in order to calculate the area. So how do we do that? Well, I guess the easiest way to do that, the most systematic way to do that, is to lay out the points that we're using to build our polygon in counterclockwise orientation.
starting at, for instance, 0, 0, and will also end at 0, 0. So let's see. That means our first point will be 0, 0. Our second point will be 18, 12. Our third point is this 90 over 13, 216 over 13. Our next one will be 5, 12. Then our next one will be 0, 12. And then finally, the last one will be 0, 0. And then the strategy for using this shoelace theorem will be to take diagonals and take their product. So we'll take these blue diagonal products that I'm kind of indicating with these blue lines. And then I'm also going to take these red indicated products that I'm indicating with red lines. And then I take their difference. Well, their difference isn't the area. Their difference divided by 2 is the area. So that means my area was going to be 1 half. And then let's see. We're going to have everything in the blue parentheses minus everything in the red parentheses, and that'll give me my area. So let's see, I'll just put the non-zero terms here. So notice that my first blue product is zero. My next one is 18 times 216 over 13. The next one is, let's see, 90 over 213 times 12. And then my last one is five times 12. And then let's see, inside the red products, I'll have 12 times 90 over 213. And then I'll also have 216 over 13 times 5. And those are all my non-zero products for the red. Now, if I do a straightforward calculation like that, what you'll see is you get 138. So that means 138 is the value of our goal area. And that's a good place to stop.